my friends. I haven't been on in a long time, except to throw on a couple of shorts. I apologize. I've just been busy, and uh, it's been a great fall, so I've been outside painting a lot. I was out just a few days ago. I can't believe it. Um, lately, I have been super interested in uh, painting, even though I, you know, I've been painting pretty much full-time for probably pushing 20 years. And I think I have painted just about everything you can paint. Um, live models, tons of, hundreds of still lifes, lots of plein air, lots of buildings. And I, I feel like I have finally, even though I've done tons of house commissions and pet commissions, and I still love doing them, but I feel like I have really zeroed in on what I want to do. That's what I'm saying right now. Things can change. Um, my interest now, though it always was, I like buildings and, you know, I like plein air, but I want to paint the activity. The buildings I want to be my background and I want cars and people and lots of things going on. Um, I'll show you some of the ones I've worked on. This one, this one is in progress. I just blocked it in. It's, it's a 10 by 20. And the sky is dirty. There's a lot of work to do here yet. But this was I just one I just started the other day. This is uh, Bellevue, Kentucky. But I'm just having just such fun. And it will have a crosswalk, so I'll have people. Um, and again, lots of cleaning up to do. This is, you know, pretty much a block in. But I'm happy with where it's going. Um, I'll show you. Here's a little one that is finished. I stood on the corner in Lebanon, Ohio and painted most of this. I um, I added the guy on the bicycle later and I had like one car and kind of just the place where the cars went and I blocked those in at home. Uh, well, actually there's a short that shows me finishing it up. Um, but my idea now is to not finesse these buildings block them in. They're the background for all of the activity. So no more painting in probably perfect windows. I'm not trying to do that. I mean, if you're familiar with this area, you know that that is the Golden Lamb Hotel. Um, but I am just loving all this activity. Let's see. There's a couple more I can show you. This is also, I luckily live by Lebanon, Ohio, which is about a half an hour away from me. And it's like a s small, big city. So I stood up on the corner, and this one I started on location too. Um, I added people, more people in later. I added the motorcyclist in later, and that car. Those, it's difficult, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it, parked cars, they sit there a little while, and you can sometimes get those in. Um, of course, everything else that's moving, but you know, he's very loose, very loosely done. Um, might tweak it a little, might add some more light to it, but, you know, just the most fun. And there's one more I can show you, maybe. It's over here on the wall, and it's framed. Let's see if we can swing you around and show you. Right there, with the car, the back end of the car toward us. That was also started on location, and the car was parked. I did add, I'm sorry, you're crooked. I did add those people later on. The three people walk in there. So that is what I'm interested in. Just, I mean, it's really great after all this time of painting that I just, oh, I'm just beyond excited. Um, <laughs> I was talking to one of the gals I painted with the other day and she's a lot younger than me. And right now she's just at that point where a lot of artists reach where you get discouraged and you think, why should I, why should I create any more art? Um, Thank God I don't feel that way. Um, I mean, I have hundreds and hundreds of paintings. Um, I am doing a show on this Saturday at Sycamore High School. Um, if you live in the Cincinnati area, it's on Cornell Road. And then I have a show in December. But, you know, there aren't that many artists moving a lot of art. They just aren't. You have to do it for the love of it. You really do. And um, I do love it. Oh, my goodness. Um, the artists I think that make a living at it are the artists that teach. 
I say if I had the supporters, we'd starve to death. That's, that's not why I do it. It never was why I did it. I did it because I love it and I want to be good at it. So, oh, well, let me show you what we're going to do tonight. This is another photo that I took up at the Golden Lamb. Uh, not the Golden Lamb, in Lebanon, Ohio. And I've got buildings and some detail in the back. But I got my cars, and there's a crosswalk right there in the front. So, see, I have the opportunity to put some people in. So, we'll do, like I said, I've, I've cropped it pretty much square. So, I'm going to hold my paintbrush to the photo. This is how I do it and transfer some marks over. Everything, of course, because of perspective, it kind of is running uphill, and all of the buildings are running off the top. All right, let's kind of put some marks. That's approximately the first building. The second building's about there. You know, I just, uh, like I said, I've spent a lot of years um, standing there painting buildings, and I tend to, I'll take pictures, I let the cars pass by, and I, you know, that's, they're there. That's part of a city scene, is all that activity. So that's what I, I really want to get now. All right, I'll shut up and focus. trees are kind of a red color. I may make them more orange because it is a fall scene. kind of got a curb over here. I don't know whether we want it or we don't. Um, the other day when I started that big one, the first one I showed you, I actually kind of just kind of blocked in the buildings in the back. Not really. But the first thing I did was the cars. I mean, you can kind of gauge the painting off of whatever you want. You can get the buildings in size and then look on the buildings. I've done it that way to see where the cars hit on the building to judge your size of your car. I was trying to find this one painting that I, oh, where'd it go? Ooh, let me show you this painting. I love this painting I did this year. It's a simpler scene, but um, I'm gonna take you with me. Come with me, let's go for a ride. <laughs> Okay, here it is. I just framed it up recently. It's kind of a simple scene. What I liked was there was sunlight on the building. And look at my car. I really love my car. And the way I did it was I blocked the buildings in first. And then I saw, okay, where does the front end hit that? Where does it come up here? And I kind of just put in the approximate size of the car. And then I did the car. So... Like I said, that's a lot simpler, but um, I like it a lot. I'm gonna get you back far enough where you can see everything. I hope that's okay. All right. And we'll probably, we may do the same thing here. We may, it doesn't really matter, I don't think. What we do first. a lot of fun with cars. <laughs> and we'll just start with that car. So usually I, I take my dark and I I look at the objects that 
are darker, which is the windshield. Okay. Here, I mean, you know, where's another dark? Down here under the hood. And we may have to adjust and adjust and adjust, and we will. And then the side windows are dark. You know, we all have different interests, and like I said, right now, this is just, I'm just ate up with this. Just loving it. For myself, I have a tendency to make them too short, so I have to watch for that. What are you working on right now? What's your what's interesting you right now? What are you painting? And then I try to look at the space from tire to tire. You know, just observe. You know, it's usually much darker up around the top. You know, but there's little fun things. The mirrors are fun and the taillights are fun if you can see them. And um, see, I can see already I'm making some mistakes. That's okay. Like that, uh, that, that, that's not right. You know, there's lots of kinds of cars too, you know. And you look for the shadow underneath. A lot of times they come out in front. This one comes out in front. And you can change the color of the cars as you need to. I just, I did a competition not too long ago and a girl took second place, had a yellow house and uh, no, it was it was a greenhouse, so she chose to do the compliment and make the car, she had a car in the driveway and do it the red. So it really did work. And then, um, where'd my scraper go? Well, I always have my rubber scraper on hand and a palette knife as I'm painting. I love this thing. Looks like a brush, but it's a flexible. You know, and you can go in and, uh, you know, cut things back if you need to. A little bit of light there that, uh, so we'll just start, no reason, we'll just start with this car. It just doesn't matter. And it's kind of a silver color. Maybe white, it doesn't matter. And I could make it, I could make it red, you know. But I can, like I said, it's nice when a car is parked for a while and sometimes you'll just start them and then here they come and they move them on you, so. Plein air painting has its Aggravations and its rewards for sure. I find as time goes by, I just love it more all the time though. So I try to just, you know, just work my way down and build it. Like how much space from there to there. And then it gets a little darker as it rounds the, goes down into here. And a lot of times you, you can look for it, but there'll be 
you know, the windows and the cars, of course, are going to be reflecting color, too. Sometimes blue, sometimes green. Um, and I may not, we may, we'll see how long we do this tonight. This may not be very exciting for you. I appreciate those of you especially that have been with me for years and follow me. Thank you so much. And we got new some new subscribers. My channel doesn't grow as quick as some. I think maybe because, I don't know, maybe because I do paint in real time, it's boring. I should learn how to edit so I can zip through them, right? A lot of plein air painters on here. Need to take a class on editing videos. I just film them and post them. You go watch a demo though, and that's real time, right? We decide we're gonna do a family and friends event, my uh, Monday group, December the 1st. If you, again, if you live in my area, in Cincinnati area, um, at the Cottle Park at the Snyder House, December the 1st from one to four. We're going to, um, it'll be about eight artists at least. We made demo, there's gonna be um, giveaways and, um, we're going to sell paintings, and one gal even does jewelry and cards and things like that, but there'll be some nice reduced prices. So I haven't decided what I'm taking yet. I have to get through this weekend, and then I'll decide. So you just, you know, build a car and... Sometimes you get it right and sometimes you don't and you have to tweak it. And... and sometimes they're not perfect and that doesn't matter either. You know, you just have to decide. Yeah, the show I'm doing this weekend's at uh, Sycamore High School, which is again, you know, kind of an arts and crafts show. Don't never did it. I hear it's good. Um, it was I was juried. Um, they have like scavenger hunts and they give away stuff all day long, and uh, they notify me that I whatever it means. I won in my category. I don't know. I mean, let's admit it. I probably do not have a lot of competition in fine art, you know, uh, which can be good for me too. You know, people don't always expect a pine, pine art, fine artist at arts and craft shows. So I've done some small things for the show. I did, uh, I painted eyeballs on rocks which I think I might have a video of that on here, too, if you're interested. Um, I said they're kind of fun and creepy. I ordered rocks from Amazon, and... Uh, painted eyeballs. I wanted something, you know, um, affordable people could pick up and... Uh, We'll see. I also did tote bags. I think I might have told you that too, which is something new for me. Yeah, if you're gonna do that kind of venue, you can't go in there with, you know, all $500 paintings and expect to, you know, you're in there with people selling inexpensive things.
So if you're going to do this, you know, you got to decide how much detail you want in this thing. Of course, we're going to have um, you know, there has to we have to introduce when we get to that point like light underneath here where you're seeing th through there. You know, there's a few places I'm seeing through there. Kind of suggesting a mirror. And lastly is the little hubcaps and you can decide, you know, how much, how realistic you want to make them, how detailed you want to make them. You know, my goal was for the whole painting to be painterly. Okay. feels a little warped right now, but also you can go in with, uh, you know, decide, put in some highlights too, because there usually are some, sometimes some very bright highlights. I feel like that needs to come over. I could see things already, like this angle here needs to come down more that way. It kind of comes straight down and down more like that. You know, long as in the end we get it. And again, he's supposed to be impressionistic. I don't want it to be, you know, realistic. So let's start with that guy. And then we can jump back to the car behind it kind of uses as a guideline to see where that's hitting. I can see it going kind of behind this and up. What I do do, do do, I do do, is uh, I shoot photos of cars while I'm there and photos of people while I'm there. That way, if you want to add people, you can get them maybe in the right place and judge their size. You know, shoot them in front of the building that you're painting. So if you want to add them later on, you can do that. So I do try to do that. So we'll see how people, you know, receive the paintings. I mean, I'm doing it because I'm loving it, um, but it would be nice too if people love them, you know. Depending on the angle of the car, you just have to look for it. Um, sometimes you can see all four tires. This car is kind of, uh, this car is parked, so it's kind of setting downhill that way a little bit. Just things to look for. 
sometimes as cars go way down the street and away from you, you're not getting a whole lot other than like reflections, you know, little dots of reflections. So this car is more blue looking to me. We'll put a tiny bit of solvent free liquid on there, get this to move a little bit. It's like anything you're painting, you know, um, if this shape is dark or how big is this shape and you know, it's like anything. And of course the back end goes away from us and it's going to get darker yet, right? Away from the light. They're kind of a little box. I mean, you can watch some videos on here on YouTube that people have ways of painting them. They can show you. And this edge looks kind of lost over there against the building. You know, it's dark back in there. Notice a lot of cars have those rack things on top too. Anyway, this is what I've been doing lately. And I've been painting things for our show that's coming up next March too. My bear, remember the bear I started on here? He's probably finished. Yeah, he's over there. And then uh, did that dog out the window. And I got a couple other things in the works. It's kind of fun if you uh, are a member of a group like I am to have a themed show. It kind of motivates you to, you know, you're painting specific things and it makes you think outside the box too. I've done a few things that are funny and hopefully people will think so when they see them. You know, and as we put the light under there, like there's, you know, we'll explain the tire is a little bit better. Like that goes over to about there. I heard, watched a guy, uh, I bought this uh, online DVD and was watching it and uh, the guy was, he's a plein air painter, he's talking about, now I take it home, and he said, and I turn it to the wall like a bad boy. <laughs> and then when I'm ready, I turn it back around, take a look at it. So I thought that was pretty cute. You know, that is a good way to do it and have a fresh eye when you, sometimes you'd hate them. And then you come back and you think, well, it's not so bad or, or the other way. And you end up wiping it off. So, but I thought that was funny. Another thing that's fun from the back of a car is the license plate and the little taillights. I'm, now that I'm looking at cars a lot more, some of the taillights are down here. Some are way up here. This one's way up here. If you got a car coming at you at night, I mean, you, you know, you'd want to do some bright lights then. And the same thing with this one, like the last one. You know, let's look for some highlights. This one has some, a real bright light on it right there. We don't have our mirror on here yet, do we? There's our mirror. You know, and like I say, you could, you know, you could get into this and do more involved hubcaps if you wanted. You know, and I can see that this tire's not big enough and I 
got this little brush out, but it don't matter. clean up this when we I'm looking at the shape of this still this feels like it's ought to be up a little higher that's painting isn't it just adjust and adjust husband took a fall yesterday he uh, got up in the attic in the hallway here on a ladder and he just leaned too far in the ladder I heard him crash hoping he wasn't on the ladder well he was and uh, he was against the wall I come running and luckily he didn't break any bones and we didn't have to call a squat or anything but he really ripped the skin off his arm The older you get, the thinner your skin gets. And uh, so, yeah, made a mess of his poor arm. I don't know what we got going there. But he's okay. I mean, like I said, could have been much, much worse. Right, let's, this car here, I'm just seeing a little bit, and this may seem like a backwards way to do this, but again, my focal point is not really the buildings, which is a different way for me to paint. This one, I'm just, you can't see much here. This is just mostly dark. We'll explain it with a few highlights, I guess. Our daughter called right before I came back here and she said, put Humpty Dumpty on the phone. <laughs> I'm like, I'll let you call him that. So. so this car back here, we don't see much. I see some cool Cool highlights on the top of it, and one bright highlight on the top of it. That's really about all I'm seeing. It must be like a big Jeep or something, huh? All right, let's see where the next one is now. The next one is hitting about here. You don't see much of it. The wheels here, but I have to keep in mind as I'm doing this, these cars are all parked in a row. So um, if this is the angle, and this would continue to be the angle, so this is too low, right? It seems like a small thing, but it, it would stand out, so. Like I said, and what I'm gonna do with these buildings when I get to them, which may or may not be tonight, is I'm gonna take a big brush and I'm gonna block them in thick and quick. And then I'm not gonna, you know, I am gonna put detail, cause I do like the detail, but I'm not, again, they're not my focus. So I'm not gonna 
play around with them a lot. this up a little bit. You know, when you do this stuff and sometimes you find out later on that, you know, things don't work. This this is coming off of there by the way. And you find out things don't work and then you have to adjust. So we'll see. said, gosh, most of these cars are like silver and white. And I've noticed that now that I'm painting cars, it's like, gosh, so many cars are white. Black, white, silver seems to be the primary colors. Occasionally you see a red one. What color is your car? We've got a dark blue one and we've got a silver one. And I may not like the way that feels. It kind of is just like a big black box in there. So in the end, I may want to change that. So I'm the artist, so I always joke it's Barbie's world. So I may change that before I'm done. We'll zoom in on that a little bit. Yeah, I don't know about the black one. And we got one more, which, let's see. And that one runs over here. can see a, a tire on the back, which is kind of fun. That's about where the back end is. And it pretty much runs across where that tire is. this car is going to run off. Keep in mind the way things are Yeah, I'm not feeling that square one right there, so I may scrape that out and put um, something that looks more like a car. Go a little darker toward the back. No tone this time. If I had a tone on, um, I always.
always say, make my life easier, and it does. <laughs> That's just an absolute square right now. And, uh, but I do see um, on top, and I do see like a roof rack thing up here. So, um, We gotta get that angle so it feels right. And this tire thing goes up in front of the window like that. I've got a bit of dark paint up there that I have to, we'll get it when we, um, paint in the background. I'll be doing a, um, the Monday group that I paint with, we paint at Cottle Park and we have this beautiful house that we paint in. And, um, We've started doing a new thing um, where maybe every quarter, like four times a year, we're going to have a program, and we just had one, and uh, Don Schuster that's in the group, his program, he did, if you're familiar with it, Eric Rhodes has um, a paint out in New York in the spring. And then in the fall in California, and Don did both of them this year. He went to New York, and he actually won the one to California. So he went out there and painted too. So his demonstration, his um, program was about his plein air trip, actually mostly to California. Uh, you know, tons of photos, and he showed all his equipment, and uh, it was interesting. And um, the next program is going to be Rachel Wolf, who used to be editor for, if you know, Splash magazine, or was it a book? It was watercolor, excellent. She was the editor of that for years and years. So Rachel knows her stuff, and she's going to talk about, I believe, like getting juried into shows and stuff. Um, she's, you know, she's judged shows, and um, so that should be interesting. Then I'm going to do the next one, and I'm going to do uh, pretty much decided it's going to be tools of the trade and how I work. So the kind of that would be the title. So I'm going to share a lot of tools that some people may be familiar with and some may, maybe not, and talk about how I work. Even and I probably will. I'm not going to do a full demo, but maybe the talk about how I work and, you know, maybe get a sketch on. And so that probably won't be until spring at least. So that's a shadow right there, which may or may not stay. There's a shadow right there from that mirror. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about this boxy thing back there, whether or not that even feels like a car. You know, of course I do have the freedom to paint some windows in and make it look more like a car, right? Which would probably help. Can't see much in the photo, so. I 
how's all the world cars looking? I've got to make sure to like, uh, like separate the front of this one from that one. You know, that kind of thing. And again, this will not be there when we paint the background in because the nose of this car is running off. Well, we got a lot of white cars. And in the end, I might want to make this car red. Why not, right? So we won't spend a lot more time, but let me just talk to you about how I plan to handle the background. You can kind of build the background, again, however you want. You can base it on um, these cars. You know, I can look and see where things hit in relation to the cars. I'm just going to get a ratty, pretty good sized bristle brush. And I've uncropped my photo now. Let me crop back into it. Kind of where it was so it doesn't confuse me. All right, the nose goes off. Oh, we're all the way in front of that car. That's about all I can see. And all these buildings are, are basically a red brick building. Um, so I'm going to mix an orange. And we'll mix some uh, transparent red oxide in there. And I, I would probably come back and maybe brighten some up. But for now, I'm just doing kind of a, a brick color. Okay. And I actually, that'll go about there. I actually can just really, if they were different color buildings, I would not block them in all the same. But because they're basically just all red brick buildings, see kind of a top on this building I'm trying to determine what I'm seeing there it doesn't matter we'll go ahead and block it in now if this was a real sunlit building I probably be laying it on heavier. I mean, you know, if you're painting oils, show them off. Now we're just, anyway, this is the decision I make for now. We're just gonna, because when I look there, that's what I see. They're just kind of all red brick buildings with lots of detail. Awnings and things. Kind of lost our highlight on that guy. We're gonna have to put that back on.
we get some color on it for now, and then we can come back and thicken it up if we want. Let me switch off for a second, grab this brush. It's a little smaller to go between these cars. I don't want to mess that up. got into that a little bit, didn't we? All right, we got some color back there. Yeah, that seems to be about where the... So we've got, you know, a couple of trees in the scene. Again, the crosswalk comes across. This car is actually on this side of the road. There's a shadow here, which is nice. Um, So we lost that really bright highlight on top of this car. Put it back. And sometimes you can see, you know, where those highlights should go. Sometimes you can't. You gotta decide where you want them. This has been almost an hour, so maybe we'll quit there. It's kind of more a lesson in, in painting cars. Um, so I'll just real quick show you what I'm going to do um, before we quit here. I quit painting in these real precise little windows. I'm not doing it anymore. So let's see, this building, let me get things right here before I do this. This building stops about here. Okay. There's a doorway here. And again, I may not have enough paint on here. I may want to um, add more paint. There's a door there, there's a window there. This door has white around it, so I'll be coming back. And uh, and then our awnings here. And it goes over into this building. So we'll have to, and it goes up. Something like that. And the windows upstairs, there's a tree, of course, over them. They're kind of difficult to see, but it's like, So we don't want to be, I don't want to be real precise with them. I'm not going to make perfect square windows anymore. The ones on the building over here are curved. So I'll be using a brush about this size for lots of this detail. Um, I may even move in some um, street lights, which I don't see, but I may want them. Not loving the color of the blue building that I'm, I mean, car here. So I may, I may change that. So. All right, well, that's a start, and I appreciate you joining me, and uh, like and subscribe, please, if you haven't. Still trying to get monetized. I don't think it's ever going to happen. I'm going to run out a year before that happens, but oh well. <laughs> it's not why we do it. It's fun. Okay, thank you again. Thank you so much for joining me, and uh, not sure when I'll be on again, but uh, watch for my shorts, too. I throw those on from time to time. All right, you have a wonderful evening. Catch you soon.